Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. We hope you're staying safe and well. Today's webinar will give you a quick 10-minute overview of the Agile and Waterfall project management methodologies. In an effort to provide you with the most possible information in a short amount of time, we won't be responding to questions during today's webinar. However, if you have questions, please submit them in the question box in the GoToWebinar interface. If you don't see the questions box, you can access it by clicking on the orange arrow in the corner of your screen. We will answer any questions that are submitted in a blog post that we will send out later this week, along with a link to a recording of this webinar. Today's webinar is brought to you by the Wisconsin School of Business Center for Professional and Executive Development, which partners with individuals and organizations to enhance performance and productivity through professional development programs, certificates, coaching, consulting, and assessments. More than 70 programs are delivered annually on site at the Fluno Center in beautiful downtown Madison, and we are now offering online programs facilitated by instructors with practical real world experience. The Center for Professional and Executive Development also partners with organizations throughout the country to provide customized on site and online professional development programs, coaching, and consulting. For more information on the Center for Professional and Executive Development, please visit our website at uwcped.org. I'm now going to turn things over to our presenter for today's webinar, Helen Browson. Helen is the Senior Director of Client Experience for the Center of Profession for Professional and Executive Development. She works with clients to deliver custom development solutions and oversees the delivery of CPEDs in-person and online professional development programs. Welcome, Helen. We're excited to have you with us today. Thanks, John. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm delighted to be here with you today to talk about these two project management methodologies. These are very interesting times we find ourselves in. Whether or not you are an official project manager or are juggling projects amid this COVID-19 situation, you're probably working from home and you're managing family environments. Many of us are being forced to look at project management in new ways. So our hope for today is to provide you with information to help you with your projects. Agile, waterfall, phase-based, sprints, scope, requirements, these are all just a few of the terms that you'll hear when you're learning about project management principles and methodologies. The information can be overwhelming, but choosing a methodology is the first decision that needs to be made in any project. So today we're going to focus on the differences between agile and waterfall project management. Let's start with what is a project? Projects are unique and they have a beginning and an end. They, they create something like a solution, a product, a service, or a successful event. So if you have a project that you're doing over and over again, then you're really working on a process. Processes repeat and projects should be unique. Phase-based or waterfall project management has been around longer than any other project management approach. Waterfall follows an approach that assumes you know what you want to build and deliver from the very beginning of the project. Waterfall methodologies all follow a basic approach, <clears throat> excuse me, that look like this. Identify the requirements, plan the work, work the plan, manage the scope and make small changes as you work through the plan, and then close the project. The waterfall method can be used on relatively small to extremely large projects with teams that are the size of one or the size of thousands. <clears throat> If we were to look at the pros and cons of using Waterfall, you would find that if well done, Waterfall can give you projects that are done on time, within, pro within budget, and meets the needs of stakeholders that requested the project. Where Waterfall struggles is where there are high levels of uncertainty present, such as not being able to identify requirements or customers that have only a small idea of what they want. Waterfall will really struggle when you can't get estimates for tasks in the plan if the tools or the technologies or the approaches are new and unknown. And so, Agile was created with those highly uncertain projects in mind. 
This methodology focuses on a detailed plan at the beginning because the plan will undoubtedly change in highly uncertain environments. Agile also focuses on creating small incremental pieces of the solution that are valuable to the stakeholders so that feedback can be provided on what is good, what's bad, and what's needed next. Agile focuses on iterative looping sprints, typically about two weeks in duration, that when chained together, create releases of work that can be used by customers that eventually lead to a fully realized solution. Review feedback sessions help guide the team on the next set of activities that they should focus on. Agile needs prioritized requirements or user stories to help the team determine what's most important to work on and what they should be estimating. Agile works best with small, self-managed, and co-located teams. As a result, while Agile can be used on large epic projects, it, it's best used on smaller scoped projects, new product development, and software development. As I mentioned earlier, when the work you're performing repeats, it's a process. And frequently, processes can be inefficient and frustrating. Processes need improvement. They can be improved, and the improvement effort is typically run as a project. There are many process improvement methodologies that do this well. All process improvement methods focus on improving performance and increasing satisfaction for customers, process workers, and the rest of the organization. All process improvement projects start with a system that is in place called current state. This effort identifies root causes preventing the desired performance that is needed in the future state. It also helps develop solutions and approaches in that future state to reach the desired performance level. Data-driven problem solving is a critical component of good process improvement. Most people agree that process improvement methodologies tend to be a special type of phase-based project management. Project management tends to struggle when you're doing new product development or when performance isn't clearly agreed upon by all stakeholders or when no data-driven root cause analysis has been performed. So before you decide what project management methodology to use, you need to determine if you're working on a project or a process. Do you have a project that you're doing over and over again? Is it, a, is it repetitive? then this is a process. Are you creating something unique like a solution, a product, a service, or a successful event? If so, congratulations, you have a project. Once you've decided it's a project, then you need to determine which methodology you need by answering these questions. Does the project have a defined scope, timeline, and budget? Do you have time to take the project slow and steady? And will your stakeholders have limited involvement in the project? If the answers are yes, you probably want waterfall. Conversely, is the scope unclear or will it change during the project? Do you want iteration and experimentation along the way? And will your stakeholders be involved during the sprints? Then Agile may, may be the way for your project. Regardless of the methodology, there are three things all project management approaches need to be successful. Technical tools for analysis, estimating, and forecasting. Management of people and human dynamics associated with any group-based activities. And the ability to create buy-in for the future state solution. With these three things in place, implementing either agile or waterfall methodology will help set you up for project success. I hope these tips help you better manage your projects as well as adjust to all the different working environments we're all experiencing right now. Good luck, be well everyone. And John, I'm gonna hand it back over to you. Great, thank you so much, Helen. The tips and techniques that Helen discussed can be further explored in our upcoming webinars. On May 21st, CPED instructor and project management expert Scott Converse will help you make sure your projects aren't set up for failure. In project initiation, identifying and implementing the right tool set, Scott will help you create a project charter, 
design a project RACI, and streamline your requirements gathering process. You can sign up for Scott's webinar by going to go.wisc.edu slash cped hyphen waterfall 521, which you can see on your screen. We also invite you to dive deeper into the Agile framework by joining us the following week on May 28th to learn how to use Agile methodologies to create rapid value for your organization. CPED instructor Sean Belling will teach you how to ensure credibility for your project team, which creates opportunities to request and deliver more value creating projects. You can sign up for Sean's webinar by going to go.wisc.edu slash cped agile528. Before you go, we also wanted to share an exciting announcement from the Center for Professional and Executive Development. This summer, we are expanding our master's certificate in project management to offer both waterfall and agile tracks. Each track in the master's certificate in project management is eight programs that can be taken in whatever order best meets your schedule and professional development needs. The waterfall track will help you manage large scale projects, implement new methods, tools, and techniques, and evaluate and improve project workflows. The Agile track will give you the skills to succeed as an Agile product owner, lead teams more effectively as an Agile Scrum master, and manage Agile projects in mixed environments. After completing the Agile track of the Master's Certificate in Project Management, you will also be a certified Agile product owner and a certified Agile Scrum master. For more information or to enroll free of charge, visit go.wisc.edu slash cped pmcert Again, thank you for attending the webinar today. We hope you're able to implement these techniques on your next project. And with that, stay well, and we hope to see you at one of our upcoming webinars. Have a great day.